Are you tired now, mommy? Oh man, you guys, I am freaking exhausted. <coughs> this is how I remember feeling at training. I remember going to bed early all the time. You know, with everybody also speaking French and me speaking English, it's like a different layer of tired. <laughs> Cause you're just trying to understand what's going on and you feel like you're missing out when people are laughing you don't know what happened i mean the trainer tries their best to like always communicate with me and i really appreciate that but long days and it's up and down there's so much emotion that happens so much anxiety so much stress um so hello welcome to this episode i hope you guys are enjoying this guide dog series so far because girl you Oh, I got a text out of friends. You bet there are so many more episodes ahead, so make sure you're hitting that bell. Oh my god, I'm losing my mind. Make sure to hit the bell notification so you're actually notified every single time I upload a new video. And don't forget, if you can't wait for the big YouTube reveal, you can always have, head over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Molly Burke. Join the club because um, I'm not gonna lie to you. They already know everything about new puppies, so check it out. Today. Today was Monday, first full day of training. And where I left you guys off <laughs> on the last video with a cliffhanger was about to work a dog. So let's jump into that. Puppies are so excited that we're here. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> They brought over the first dog and what's super interesting is they did not um, tell us the gender or the name. Here's a puppy for you, Molly. Yeah. A puppy. Oh, puppy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I give you the It's okay. Yeah, he's lovely. He's a nice dog. Is it a he or she? They didn't say. They didn't say. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Okay. I'm saying he, but... Yeah. And I've never had that. I can tell you all seven dogs I've worked at Mira. Um, my first time when I got Gypsy, I worked Cleo, a black lab, Java, a yellow lab, and Gypsy, a Labernese who's black and white. Um, last time I was here seven years ago, I worked Ozo, a black and white St. Pierre, long-haired. I worked Mistral, a black and white long-haired St. Pierre. I worked Gallop, obviously. I worked Tico, Gallop's brother who looked identical to him but slightly smaller. And I might have worked one more, but those are all I can remember. But still, like that's a lot of dogs to remember over the span of 14 years. Um, so they always told us the name and the gender, but they did not this time, which was very interesting. I think I can see why they wouldn't. I think that, like me, like I have a preference for male dogs. So I think they don't want our, like somebody's preference of anything to get in the way of what is the right match. Um, that is kind of the issue when we, as the clients, are involved with picking. When I say issue, I would still rather pick my dog any day over just being handed a dog and being like, sorry, this is the one you get. Hopefully, hopefully it works. I mean, obviously in schools that do pre-match, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into making those matches happen and picking the right dog. But still like for me, having always had say in picking my dog, it seems extremely stressful to me to just the idea of not having a say. But obviously the issue with clients getting a say is that sometimes their preference can get in the way over what's best for them. And I've learned that twice over because I wanted Cleo and they gave me Gypsy and they were right. She was way better for me in retrospect than Cleo ever would have been. And I could tell that by the end of the month of training after seeing Cleo in action that Gypsy was absolutely way better for me. And with Gallup, um, I kind of like pushed for Mistral who I called Milo. They gave him to me on the Wednesday and by Friday they switched me to Gallup. And uh, yeah, that needed to happen. Mistral was not working out. Gallup was totally the right choice. So I've kind of learned to just like not get in the way and let them do their thing because they, they truly do know best. And so I think they're not telling us the gender or the name of the dogs because they don't want us to get attached, right? These aren't our dogs yet. And so they don't want us building emotional attachment to a name or preferring one because it's a female or it's a male and we prefer that and also a lot of us are working the same dogs as one another and 
they don't want us sitting at the dinner table being like, did you work Miller? Yeah, I loved Miller. Oh, I wanted Miller though. He was my favorite from today um, because that can just get messy. So I can totally understand like why they're doing that, but it is different. I've never had that happen before. And the trainer, I asked the trainer and she said it's, it's preference of the trainer. Some trainers do it, some trainers don't. So I've never had these trainers before. So obviously it's just their preference to do this. But that said, I managed to figure out the gender of all three. They tried so hard to not reveal it, but they let it slip. Well, the first one actually, um, I didn't know we weren't supposed to know. So I asked my mom and she looked and saw the weenie. So <laughs> it was a boy and um, it didn't feel right. The moment from the beginning, I tried to be open-minded, but I was like, this is not my dog. He was a mostly black Labernese with a touch of white, I believe. And he was very short. He's so small compared to Gallup, it's crazy. Yeah. He feels like a tiny dog. He feels like I mean, he's not tiny. But he feels it. You know? Yeah. And it's a little squat. I'm not gonna lie to you, a little squat. He was not fat, like he was very fit. His build, just being part Bernese Mountain Dog, he got the husky broadness of the burner, but like short little lab legs. So he was kind of like a short and stocky guy. So we were just sitting, they were just um, doing some healing, which is called au pied, um, heal. And just seeing how we walked with the dogs, going re-over some hand positioning, hand gestures. So, um, assi, we palm up, raise a hand up, assi, kush is the opposite. Uh, so there's just hand gestures that we do. And it's nice because you can actually just do the hand gestures as well. Um, anava, you raise your hand forward, you just walk forward. Viraj, you do a double tap on your thigh. So we're just going over some of those things and every guide dog develops their own communication style with their guide and so it's about these first few days are about breaking those habits and forming the correct ones again because as they said to us today these guide dogs are fresh out of university they are new grads so they're doing everything by the book and it's fine for them to change um, and to develop your own way of doing things but it's not going to come right away so you can't do the same things you do with your old guide with your new guide because they won't get it so I kept doing like, you know, yeah, um, which I think a lot of people do with dogs. That's a no-go. So I'm like trying to cut that out. Um, instead of going, if I want the dog's attention, I'm supposed to tap his side like, hey, hey buddy. So just like we were just kind of breaking those habits. And they did tell us like, we just gave you random dogs. This isn't your dog, don't get attached. And I, but I was kind of getting stressed. I was like, oh dear God, I really don't. I really hope this is not my dog. Like, maybe they gave me this dog because, like, they're giving us the ones first that they think are best for us. Like, I was kind of freaking out. And um, then I did my walk, and every dog has a different walk, right? This is why it's so great that we get to try different dogs here because not only does speed differ, but just, like, the, the gait of the dog, um, the feel of the handle uh, on the harness with the walk feels different. And so what I noticed with this first dog was it kind of had a roll to its walk which meant my hand you hopefully can see it in some of this footage was like kind of jiggling back and forth and I didn't like that now there's gonna be people who like don't mind it at all I didn't like it and I told them that I said they said you know how does it feel and I said I, I don't I noticed that he has this way of walking and I, I don't really like it and they said Speed looked a little slow, what do you think? And I said, I agree, I would be interested in trying one slightly faster. So then I did a group dog switch and I got the second dog who I eventually realized was a girl because the trainer kept accidentally letting slip bon fille, which is good girl. She immediately felt better, just energetically, but what really felt better was the walk. <laughs> And it was totally the right speed. Like it felt like the right speed, but my harness handle was too long. Now we weren't flipping handles in and out because we were just doing like the initial base level walk and switching handles takes a while to screw them all in and out and pick the right size. So they didn't switch the handle. 
so it was too long for me because she was a bit taller than the first dog and I had to kind of we had to just do a make do like make good you know where I just held the handle on the side lower down closer to the harness but overall like she felt much much better then they did a switch again final puppy um was a boy again she accidentally said he so I, I knew it was a boy um and he um was Gallop the third dog I've been working um I haven't done a walk with him yet but oh my god I feel like I'm sitting here with Gallop it's crazy like the Gallop vibes are strong with him okay. mom tell me he wasn't Gallop it was literally Gallop you're yeah. very Gallop I can't get over it it's actually I started laughing at one point because I was like what the heck this is Gallop <laughs> it's miniature Gallop with no white <laughs> he's like Gallop 2.0 you're Gallop juice <laughs> I don't know what the difference was. Maybe he was a little smaller. But he was like much. slightly smaller slightly. and didn't have any white, right? No white? Uh, no white. So he was all black and slightly smaller. But you guys? Everything else. I met Gallup 2.0. It was wild. I literally just started laughing. I was like, I and cannot. the trainers knew that too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Weird. Weird. He, his energy his mannerisms, his personality, like everything was Gallup. I was like, this is too weird. But Gallup, this was, it was so wild. I'm just gonna call him Gallup, Gallup 2.0. <laughs> so Gallup 2.0 and I, even with our walk, it was Gallup's walk. My mom, that's when my mom burst out laughing, when she saw me walking with him. I was like, look, I love this dog, I'm not gonna lie. My heart is with this dog because I know this dog. I feel at home with this dog. I have this dog at home, so, I'm very comfortable with him and he is he was my favorite from the day just because I have a seven year bond with him just the older version getting new Gallup energy like baby Gallup energy I don't know it was like very special um I feel like it would I feel like he was coming through this dog to tell me I'm gonna find the right match you know like it, it's not him but I'm gonna find him and so that's where we're at that's all the time we had this afternoon after lunch Tomorrow, Tuesday, we'll be all day working more dogs. Um, so I think I'm gonna work the female again with the proper harness link. And I wouldn't be surprised if they pull, I guess one more dog for me, maybe two. There is six of us here and there's 12 dogs to pick from. And tomorrow we'll continue to do speed test. Um, and then once we get through speed test, we'll do obstacle courses in the kennel still. So, I will bring you with me tomorrow. We will test some more stuff out and um, see how it goes. Also, it was really cool getting my fresh harness today. They've actually changed the, per the like the company that makes the handles, so the handle's a little bit different. Maybe I'll try to find one to demo for you to show you like exactly how it's different. And getting like the fresh leash and fresh collar it was really fun. It all feels so like new and crisp. But yeah, it's it was good to feel like a, a young pup in a harness again. It was exciting but i am exhausted food has continued to be chef's kiss amazing so good shout out to felix the chef not to be confused with felix the cat that's that okay i'm not bad good night good morning it is day two of training it is tuesday i've gone my mouth okay it's now in my hand so it's day two of training um i'm really excited to have breakfast delish dressed ready to go they're just at the kennels feeding all the puppies now and then we're gonna go down and start doing our thing i'm very excited looking forward to it you know i was talking to my mom um about it the other day no i wasn't i was literally talking to her about it like 40 minutes ago at breakfast <laughs> the other day <laughs> and i was saying how definitely one of the hardest parts for me about if I was to ever move schools would be the fact that it's pre-matched because my experience has always been to get a hand in selecting the dog. And at the end of the day, every dog that I try in the kennel, they're giving me to try because they think it could be the match. It could have been one that if they pre-matched, they would have matched me with. But two of the three I tried yesterday for tiny minute reasons weren't the right one. But if I had just been given that dog, I would have accepted it because it would have been my only choice. And I'm not sure like why other schools pre-match and don't take Mira's approach. But for me, it kind of is like um, 
a pre-arranged marriage versus getting to date to find love. Like I feel like I'm speed dating these dogs instead of like showing up at the altar and committing to the next six to eight years with this pup, you know? Also, I was joking that I feel like if I was to get Gallup 2.0, I'd be like one of those girls who like just went through a long-term breakup and started dating a guy immediately that was just like her ex. And like everybody notices that it's just like her ex, but she's like, what are you talking about? He's totally not like him at all. Whatever you say. Um, that would have been if I got Gallup 2.0. That definitely would have been the vibe. But I, I don't think people could have told all the difference. <laughs> My mom's like, there'd be a conspiracy online that you didn't get a new dog. <laughs> I just dyed his white spots black to pretend. Oh, so funny. Very relaxing energy though, that dog. Oh, I know. Just I mean, like look, I love him because I know him. It's the net. We're on to the next chapter, so we can't repeat. Uh, but I can definitely see why they pulled him to match me. I apparently radiate the I need the chill dog energy. Uh, they're like, she's up tired. She's <laughs> she needs a chiller. Um, okay, let's go to the kennels. Update. Okay, so um because training is only two weeks instead of the usual three, they've decided that today, Tuesday, we will be sleeping with a dog. Usually it's Wednesday night. So tonight we should be sleeping with a dog. So this morning they're splitting training into two so three people are down at the kennel right now and three of us are just hanging out in the dorms and then we'll switch and what they're doing is one person is going into the kennel and working multiple dogs and then the other two are doing harness practicing um so this is dog hair in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> the rest of my life dog hair in my mouth so harness we're doing harness manipulation. So basically, uh, one of the sighted people will be holding the harness and acting like a bad dog and doing like fake walking. And you'll be holding the handle and doing, you know, like different harness manipulations, hand motions, going over the gestures for virage, on va, ah, g, couche, you know, asi, couche. So we're just going over all the hand gestures um, because, you know, for some of these people, their dog, you know, they haven't had a dog in many 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 years some people take breaks between dogs like long breaks some people like one person just got rid of her dog on i don't want to say got rid of but like just passed her dog over to somebody else on friday and she came on sunday so like everybody's different so we're just going over all of the different stuff and then um they will will all kind of collectively select a dog that will come back to the dorms tonight to sleep with us and they wanted to reiterate that that dog is not final. That dog is just like the, this is the top runner. Let's see how it goes overnight. Let's see how it goes over the next few days. Um, and that dog isn't final until Friday. So anytime from today when they give us that dog to stay until Friday, it could get switched. So they said, you know, bond with the dog, work with the dog, but don't get too attached or like set in your way because it's not permanent, it's not final. So that's the update. Well, I'm just um, chilling here, waiting to go uh, work with some pups today. I asked Mira if I could see all of the different harnesses they offer for the different programs, just so I could show you guys, because I think it's really great um, educational piece. So this is the harness that they use for the autism assistance program. You can see it looks very similar to the guiding harness, the exact same kind of leather body harness. Um, but instead of having any form of a handle, it just has this at the top of the back in the middle, um, which is where the parent would attach a leash because when the kids are young with the autism program, the parents are the ones who kind of have the dog in their hand. Um, and then the kids sometimes have their own leash separate that they can hold on to, but the parent is the one fully in control of the dog. So this is the harness that they use for that program. This next harness is for the manual wheelchair users. So the dogs here at Mira, I know not all dogs for people in wheelchairs are trained to pull. Mira dogs are trained to pull the wheelchair up ramps and things like that. So they're able to hook this around. Uh, and then obviously this is the leather harness that goes around the body. Um, and it does have a kind of more supportive chest 
uh, region uh, and the dog's legs go through two separate holes and that is because um, they are pulling and so they want the leather to be super supportive of the dog's chest and leg region. Um, and Mira is able to provide dogs that do pull wheelchairs because of the fact that they use mountain dogs. Bernie's mountain dogs and Bernie's mountain dog mixes uh, are very large, very strong dogs, um, and that's perfect for being able to pull the manual chairs. Now for their clients that are in electric wheelchairs, the harness is slightly different. It looks closer to what a traditional guide dog harness looks like versus having the large uh, manual wheelchair that needs the, the pull strap. Then next, we have this one, which is for the mobility program for those who can still walk. Um, so it's more of a balance support dog uh, for people with aneurysms, strokes, things like that. Uh, I have a friend who had a brain tumor um, and so had a lot of balance issues from that. So she used this exact harness. Um, it is a leather harness similar, but it has a Velcro strap around versus having a buckle. Uh, because again, for dexterity and mobility, it's easier for them to do a, just a full Velcro strap versus a buckle or a clip of any kind and then it has this rigid back strap or this rigid back handle so this handle does not move it doesn't go anywhere and that way again because they use such large breeds bernese mountain dogs and bernese crosses um, people can fully brace their weight on the dog uh, this helps them with going from a sitting to standing position this helps them if they lose balance while walking this helps them go up and down stairs so this is a very useful harness uh, for those who can still walk but do have balance or mobility issues of multiple kinds <laughs> <laughs> oh wait <laughs> <laughs> what I forgot, the guiding harness, uh, the OG. Um, so, I mean, you guys have seen this. They have actually adapted it slightly because they switched sellers. Um, so the handle now is like a glued leather versus it used to be sewn around. Um, so it's slightly different. It's not quite as like squishy as it used to be, but uh, still super comfortable in the hand. Super nice. Ugh, it's such high quality. Honestly, these are like beautiful harnesses. I just finished practicing with the human in the harness and now we're gonna get some more dogs out. Let's play with some pups. Here we see Molly walking that dog outside, giving commands, stopping at the edge of sidewalks, crossing streets, and seeing if this dog is right for her. Okay, Molly from the future, I'm home now, but I just wanted to pop in and do a little connecting clip here because this day was kind of crazy. Probably for the rest of the series, you'll randomly see me popping in from like back home in my apartment to explain things and what's happening. Because obviously when I was in training, my number one focus was training. Um, so although I was making videos and a bunch of content, my key focus was training. Get up. 
sorry. My new pup wanted to get up. Um, and so, yeah, you'll randomly see me through the rest of the series popping in to help explain because I realized when I watched this edit back of no fault of my editors that like it didn't make sense. It just randomly jumped from one scene to the next. So I'm here to explain what happened. So overall, over the course of Monday and Tuesday, I worked five different dogs. At one point I thought it was six, but I think it was just five, three boys and two girls. I think you saw me work all of them except the one that I ended up with on Tuesday night, which you'll see soon. So yes, overall I worked five different dogs and at the end of the day, the trainers are the ones who make the final decision because they know these dogs best. So basing it on speed, lifestyle, personality match, energetically, how it's flowing, and most importantly, environmental. Will this dog be the right one for the environment that you're in? So for example, one of the dogs that you would have seen me work in this video, um, I think would have been a great match for every reason except environmental. This dog was not the type of dog for a big city. And so for that reason and that reason alone, they did not match me with that dog. I do know all the names of all five dogs I worked now, so I will tell you that in a future video because I don't want to spoil it and give my dog's name away um, because of course you know I'm going to be doing a fun name reveal here on YouTube, but like always, if you just can't wait, the name reveal is actually dropping in the next few days over on my Patreon, patreon.com slash mollyburke. Okay, and now back to the rest of the video. <laughs> Oh, I have a dog. <laughs> Coming up in the next episode. I think it might be too much energy for us. <laughs> he certainly does. Oh, I can't look at him. Oh. Um, so that's who's at my feet right now. What is that noise? <laughs> Drinking away, Gucci is. Here we're seeing some footage of Molly walking the dog that she actually got to take home. The dog is just out of frame, but don't worry, you guys will see this dog soon. <laughs> 